Write-on effects and growth effects are just not possible in Premiere Pro. Until today, Film Impact just announced a brand new smart tool called Shapeflow. In this video, you're going to learn fast and easy ways to apply amazing growth effects to any type of media. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Special thanks to Mixkit for sponsoring today's video. You can download thousands of free stock footage, music, templates, and sound effects for your videos. The first use case for Shapeflow is adding it to text. For example, here inside of Premiere Pro, I have a handwritten text layer inside of the essential graphics. And beneath this, I created another graphic out of a shape and I filled it with a radial gradient. So we're just going to apply the shape flow to the text layer itself. Search for shape flow and drag and drop it onto the text layer. Here is the result when we just drag and drop it. You can see that it starts from the center and goes outward. So the first thing we need to do is adjust our start point to not be in the center, but on the left. So we can go over here to point one and you can have multiple points here. You can see you can have up to five different points. In this case, we just need one. Now, as I start adjusting this, you can see that we're moving this little blue target. This is our start point. So I'm gonna have mine start in the lower left. This is what it looks like now. And you can see it's a little fast. So to make it slower, you can actually drag this out to whatever duration that you want. So you can see that there's a little bit of a delay later on. And that's because Shapeflow actually scans this image for different objects. See that there's a gap between the R and the I here? It's actually reading that as two different objects. So what we can do is we can actually select this text. And if we wanna connect these two letters, we can actually select just those two letters and go over here down to tracking and bring it closer so it's one object. Watch what happens. So now it animates as one fluid object because the R and the I are connected. And by the way, there's a 30 day watermark free trial of Film Impact. You can use my link below to follow along and use it in any number of videos that you want to test it out. All right, next let's control the flow controls from edge delay, luma delay, object delay, and object variation. As we scrub back in time and go to edge delay, if we make this a negative value, it actually creates a hollowed edge like it's getting filled in. So I actually really like this and I'm gonna have this be hollow. If we go positive, it does the opposite. So I'm going to have mine be around negative 50. So Luma Delay is better with images that have brighter and darker areas. Because this is just one solid layer, it's not gonna have that much of an impact. For example, if you have a positive value, it's going to fill in the brighter areas first and then the darker areas. For now, let's leave this at zero. An object delay, playing around and adjusting this will speed up or slow down the different objects as they come in. So remember, I had two separate objects, but then I brought the R and the I together, so it's one object. But if you have multiple objects, playing around with this will play around with the speed at which those other objects animate in. And object variation is not really useful in this case either because we don't have multiple objects, but it is useful for an object that maybe is disconnected and there's many moving parts. For example, I have this tree here and you can see that the leaves are disconnected. So there's multiple objects, right? Each leaf is its own object. In shape flow, you can see that I have my object variation at 100. So when we play this back, you'll see that some of the leaves start animating before the other ones fill in. If I have this at zero, you can see it's more of a linear animation. It basically creates a more playful dynamic animation with more moving parts. For example, this leaf filling in before the others. And next, if you wanna add a pop of color that animates while your text animates on screen, you can click on gradient controls and choose a different color trail. So you can do single tone, all the way to five different colors. So let's try the duo tone. And I've selected a darker yellow and a lighter yellow. And for the trail length, if you increase this, you can also open up the slider here. You can see it just gets bigger. In this case, I'm just going to choose a subtle amount around 20, but I'm going to increase the feathering to 100 so it's more smooth. So now when we play it back, we get this pop of gradient color as it's handwritten, I think it looks really cool. So now we can copy the shape flow and then we can paste it at the end of the clip, Command V. So now it animates in and it animates out. 
If this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe. So next are some optional things that you can do to give it some more spice. For example, we can add some handheld camera movement on top from my new Premiere Gal Toolkit extension. If you go down to effects and handheld camera, we can apply, for example, this handheld camera movement, double click to apply it and it will apply it as an adjustment layer on top of this footage. So we can go ahead and move this over and drag this out to the duration of the clip. Now you can see that it added movement and scaled it in, but we need to scale this down. So we can click back on handwritten and go to effect controls and we can scale this down and reposition it so it's a little bit smaller. So now I just add some cool kind of wiggle movement that you've probably seen in some lyric videos. I really like the look of this. So this is completely optional, but we can add a blur that will make it seem like it's going in and out of focus. So we can go to our project panel. We can right click here on the empty space and create a new adjustment layer. And now I'm gonna drag and drop this on top of this footage and add a blur on top. So let's go to effects and let's apply a Gaussian blur. I used to call it Gaussian, but it's actually pronounced Gaussian. So I'm going to apply this to the adjustment layer. From effect controls, what we can do is we can kind of animate the blur over time manually. So we can click here and start it off at like 70%, create a keyframe and go forward and it will come back into focus by bringing it at zero. So now I can just quickly go through and go from zero to more blurry over time. And as a final touch, you can go to Mix Kit where you can download free assets. For example, if you wanna search for Boca underneath videos, we can download any one of these for free. For example, this one here, download it, and use it for free in our video. So I have the bokeh from Mixkid right here. I'm going to select all of these layers and move it up and place the bokeh beneath the text. And I'm going to go up here to effect controls and I'm going to scale it up and bring it down. And I'm going to change the blend mode to screen so it's more subtle. So you can see some of the kind of light flares and bokeh happening around the edges now. And if we don't want it to be so fast because it's pretty fast, we can press R for the rate stretch tool and just stretch this out to make it like 30% and then press C to cut it off. And so now here is the final effect and we did it all inside of Premiere Pro, no after effects at all. So as you saw, I used that free bokeh clip from Mixkit. Well, Mixkit also has lots of other things. They have video, they have music, they have sound effects and templates as well. For example, if you need a write on sound effects, we can go to sound effects and search for a write. Clicking of a pen. All of these are free that you can download and store inside of your sound effects folder to use in future projects. Maybe you need a call out template for Premiere Pro. You can go up to templates and go to Premiere Pro and search for Callout. Here are a bunch of free Mogurts that you can download and install directly in your central graphics panel to use in any number of future projects that you want. For example, if we click on this and click on download free template, you can see it starts to download. There's no sign-in required. You'll also see that Envato Elements is promoted and that's because it's the parent company of Mixkit. So all of the little freebies on Mixkit are just derivatives of the millions of giant packs that are available on Envato that you can subscribe to to get more. What about graphics? Well, actually, if you click on icons over here, it'll take you to a partner company called Reshot and you can search for all sorts of different types of graphics as well as icons here that you can download and use in any number of projects as well. You can go to illustrations as well and look at these nice illustrations that you can download and use in your designs. So if you're looking for some assets, Mixkit is the perfect resource for you. You can use my link below to download as much as you want. And talking about illustrations and graphics, this is a perfect segue into the second way to use Shapeflow and that is to create graphic growth fills. So here I have a beetle graphic that I downloaded from Mixkit. Let's go ahead and drag and drop Shapeflow on the front end of the graphic. And here it is animating. So let's make some adjustments again. We can go to Shapeflow, go to Effect Controls, and we can move the point to the left. 
There we go. I'm feeling like some fun right now. If you go over here to Film Impact, there's a surprise me button. So you can actually click on this and it will create a variety of seed variations. So if I play this back, you can see it has an interesting look. Let's try surprise me again. So it created a very interesting kind of red line as well. After I hit surprise me a bunch, I got this really interesting effect that actually created three points and gradient controls, five of them. So for maroon and all these variations of purple and blue, and this was the result. So you can really create some fast animations to graphics and illustrations if you're making kind of explainer style videos, you don't have to go in After Effects. And then I added from my Premiere Gal Toolkit, the camera movement on top of it, and here's the result. Looks really nice, right? That was all using the surprise me button to produce this really cool three point five gradient tone look. Here's another example of shape flow. You can open up shape flow to see the parameters that were used also using the surprise me icon one point, but tritone with purple, pink, and green in these flow controls. So a really nice flower animation. Here's a print of a thumb, for example. So if you want to have like a cool scan effect of a thumbprint, you can add shape flow to the beginning and the end and it can loop. And a quick tip, if you want something to loop over and over again in Premiere, you can click on loop playback from the program monitor. And if you don't see this, you can click on the plus icon and drag the loop playback here. Now, as we play it back, it'll just loop back and forth between the in and out points, just like that. And these were the parameters used to create the thumbprint scan effect. So the same can be done to logo designs, illustrations, graphs. You can even apply it to videos to see how the shape flow effect will transition your video on screen from lighter to darker, for example. Or you can do a combination of text and graphics with shape flow to create results just like this. So I added sound effects from Mix Kit here, but essentially I applied motion tween to create that slow zoom in. And motion tween is another smart tool from Film Impact. And I added a luma fade transition to go to that video. And that's also from Film Impact. This is actually nested, this entire sequence here with the text and the leaves is nested. So if I double click on this, you can see that I added shape flow to all of these different layers. So the leaf in the front as it animates in has shape flow, then the growth text layer from Essential Graphics has shape flow and the leaves behind it to produce this beautiful shape flow effect in zero keyframing had to happen. So take that after effects. <laughs> So try out Shapeflow in your next edit. You can get 30 days free, watermark free, to play around with Shapeflow and all of the other transitions that come with the Big Bang subscription of Film Impact. And I put a link below, and if you use that link, it helps support the channel. So thank you so much in advance. And I'd love to see what you create with Shapeflow. If you wanna join my Discord server, I put a link below and you can share different variations of Shapeflow that you've tried out and we can give each other tips there as well. I just wanted to create this community that we can help each other out. So if you wanna learn some more effects inside of Premiere Pro, you can click right over here and you can click over here to check out my brand new toolkit. All right, thanks so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time, bye. Mm -hmm.